In ancient history, we often find vivid descriptions of wars, great battles, and larger-than-life personalities like Hannibal, Julius Caesar, and Cleopatra. But in this video, we'll examine the deeds of one ordinary centurion in the Roman army during the end of the Roman Republic. Marcus Cassius Scyver was a centurion in Julius Caesar's army. The centurions were the backbone in the Roman legions, marked out by the transverse crests. They instilled discipline in their men, sometimes with extreme brutality. They exemplified Roman military virtues and made the Roman army the most consistently successful army in the ancient world. They were the drill sergeants of the legions, and they were expected to lead their men by example, fighting in the front lines, gaining the admiration and respect from the ordinary legionnaires. The Gallic Wars Marcus Cassius Scyva served in the front lines of the legions throughout Caesar's campaign in Gaul, Germania, and participated in the invasion of Britain in 55 BC, where Cassius Scyva, who was still a low-ranked legionary at the time, was tasked with watching the ships while the rest of the century went deeper inland to scout and make camp. As Cassius was alone, a group of Britons came out of the woods and immediately attacked Scyva, but he fought back, killing several of them. His helmet was knocked off, his shield was destroyed, and his spear was lost in the stomach of a Briton. That left Scyva unarmed and unarmoured, but somehow he managed to escape and flee back to Caesar's camp, leaving several dead Britons behind. When he returned to camp, he was worried he would be executed for losing his equipment and abandoning his post. But instead, Caesar promoted him to the rank of Centurion for his bravery. Caesar was a unique leader of his time. He shared the hardships of his soldiers and would refer to them as his comrades. After almost a decade of fighting together in Gaul, Germania and Britain, Caesar had formed a strong bond with his soldiers. They were supremely loyal to Caesar. They would die for their commander, because they knew that he would do the same for them. The Civil War At the first major engagement of the civil war between Julius Caesar and his one-time friend, and now political rival Gnaeus Pompey, was the Battle of Dyrrhachium in 48 BC, a conflict that largely consisted of building barricades and redoubts as both armies tried to cut off the supplies from their enemy. Cassius Scyva was left in command of a single cohort, less than 500 men, to hold one of these redoubts. Pompey sent an entire legion, some 6,000 men, to contest that position. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Scyva and his men fought with determination and discipline. During the desperate fighting, Scyva was hit by an arrow in his eye, leaving him permanently blind in that eye. Despite this horrific injury, which would have killed most men, Scyva delivered a battle cry and tore the arrow out of his eye socket and fought on with an increased ferocity. Close quarter combat in the ancient world was brutal, bloody, and horrifying business. Scyva reveled in it, killing so many enemy soldiers that his sword edge had blunted and even crushed another man's skull with a rock. And as he was hit in the thigh by a sword and a javelin in the shoulder, while his shield had received 120 strikes full of arrow shafts, he maintained obstinately the guard of the redoubt. Then finally, after hours of fighting, the weakened Skyver fell to one knee, and there was a pause in the fighting as Skyver held up one hand as if he wanted to say something. And then he called out to his enemies, Save your comrade, your friend, and send somebody to lead me by the hand, for I am wounded. Thinking Skyva was deserting to the enemy, they sent two soldiers to help the bloodied centurion off the battlefield, and when they approached him and asked if he was ready to surrender to them, they were met with the only response he could think to give them. A few swift sword strikes that lopped off the arm of one of them and killing the other. The fighting would continue for hours, until Caesar's main army arrived. Caesar would have already been very familiar with Scyva's competence in warfare, 
and this is what Caesar himself wrote about Skyver's deeds. Not a single soldier escaped without a wound, and in one cohort, four centurions lost their eyes, and being desirous to produce testimony of the fatigue they underwent, and the danger they sustained, they counted to Caesar about 30,000 arrows which had been thrown into the fort, and in the shield of the centurion Skyver, which was brought to him, were found 230 holes. In reward for this man's services both to himself and the Republic, Caesar presented to him 200,000 pieces of copper money and declared him promoted from the 8th to the 1st Centurion, for it appeared that the fort had been in a great measure saved by his exertions. And he afterwards very amply rewarded the cohorts with double pay, corn, clothing and other military honours. Skyver, who had distinguished himself defending one of the forts at Dyrrhachium, was promoted to the rank of Primus Pilus in the Legion. The Primus Pilus, meaning the first spear, was the highest rank an ordinary soldier could achieve in the Legions. Skyver was also awarded a bounty of 50,000 denarii, 100 years' pay for an ordinary legionary. After Caesar's death, Skyver would continue to serve his adopted son, Octavian. An inscription has been found dating from the 30s BC that referred to a Gallic auxiliary cavalry unit that was called Alla Skyvi, or Skyvus's Wings. It seems very likely that it's the same man who, after having served with distinction in Caesar's legions, became a prefect of his own auxiliary detachment. It was the heroism of people like Cassius Skyva that in no small part led to Caesar's success and eventual victory in the civil war that made him dictator of Rome. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when we upload new videos.